What? Do it again. I got the dust machine. We're gonna go into Spokane Valley uh, Archery and we're gonna talk to MFJJ. I'm going to ask him for a brief lesson because I wanna get better at shooting this year and I feel like I've kind of plateaued. So I'm gonna ask somebody who's actually better at archery than I am what I can do to continue to progress as an archer and get better. Let's go talk to him. The, um, before you fire it, I'm gonna tell you to do a couple things. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Okay, now point at the floor like you're trying to shoot a 30 degree down angle. Okay, now point up like you're shooting a high angle. Okay, come back to normal and try to make a clean shot. Um, Now I'm disregarding the CrossFit shakes. Your wrist is about as extended as you could push it. Like I'd say okay. you're shooting with a modified high wrist grip. Okay. And I think that's trying to make the draw length fit you. Okay. Um, first off, your shoulders kind of up. It would be better if it was down a little bit, just from a fatigue standpoint, because you're gonna get more tired here and you're stronger here than you are here. Okay. And with your shoulder up, you're extending your draw length out to do that. So if you drop your shoulder down a little bit, it's going to come it's back into you more and you're probably doing that because of length okay um and when you see it when you shoot downhill and you shoot uphill your hand starts coming off your face and then you try to readjust your head so it stays on your face that's an indicator that your draw length's probably too long yeah. now you don't have to change because at the end of the day if you can do it the same it does not matter right what i think yeah 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 but but i like ju judging off what i'm seeing yeah it, it looks like you're probably a quarter to a half inch too long okay. i had to guess so on a matthews how mm -hmm. do we go with a quarter uh, you twist or untwist the string. So the the better question is, do we want to go down a half inch and then twist the cables up a little bit, which will increase the peak weight a little bit? Or do we want to shorten the string a quarter, which will decrease your peak weight? So it's more a matter of, do I want my poundage to go up or down if we only go a quarter? But what I would Obviously probably try up, first, up okay. Weight. So let's try, let's try, I would say a half inch shorter mod first. Okay. See how it feels, see how it looks, shoot it a little bit and then if it feels like it's too much, then we shorten the cables up and then your poundage goes up. But the mod change is super easy, super Right, fast. right, right. And you're done with your bear hunt, so you can probably tinker with your bow a little bit. Yeah. That would be a big deal, right? Yeah, for sure. So what mod do you have on here? Probably the 30s. So yeah, you've got a, a C, 85, get all this you know, <laughs> dust off here, 75 pounds. Do you want an 85% mod still, or do you want an 80? An 80. 80s is are this fat. an 85 it's on 85, here? 85, yeah. Oh, no wonder I'm shooting so bad. 80s are... <laughs> Well, 80s are faster. Yeah, and the, and I like the heavier hold weight. Okay, so let's try you in a, I didn't a D. 80. I've Here. had this janky setup this entire time. It's 85, it's right there. Yeah, but I don't pay attention to the subtle details. Well, that's my job. <laughs> that's what I do. All right, so let's get you a half inch short. Let me grab an Allen wrench and a D, and I probably have like six of those upstairs. I'd okay, so let me go grab one of those while you pull that, and I'll grab a wrench, and we'll change it out real quick. I thought we were just going to, now I'm super happy. I kind of always expect to do work. When these guys show up. Yeah, there's almost always something. Uh, even if it's minimal, there's almost always something uh, that can be improved because that's just my preference. Like if I can find something small, even if it's little, I still want it to be a little better if it's possible. Yeah, no, for sure, man. I'm going to change stuff and tweak things to work it out. Probably. What do you say your struggles are? I mean, when you're when you're saying I'm plateauing, what do you um, what do you think you struggle with? I think. I think that I get lazy and I, I tend to miss low left um, when I'm missing. Mm -hmm. And do you know why you miss low left? I have some ideas, but I would love to hear why. Well, you can go first. What do you think? No, no, no. I, I, I think I'm, I think I, I'm dropping my bow arm. I think your draw looks too long. Okay. Because you'll tradition miss low left if your draw looks too long. Is that right? Oh yeah. Okay. Overextended. If you're short, you'll tend to miss right. Okay. Because you're compressed. Yeah. So when it goes off, your hand has more room to go forward. If your arm's all the way extended out as far as it can go and it goes off or you miss, you have a tendency to go that direction. Yeah. Because that's the way your arm's moving, yeah, no, your weight's going off there. Sense. If you're hitting low sense. left, your draw length's probably too long. It's usually an indicator, but there's a lot that can go into it. And it doesn't have to be a lot. I mean, this can end up being a quarter inch change. You could 
get this half inch difference of change and go, this is awesome. The, the biggest problem with setting a draw length to what feels good is you're typically setting it to what feels good on flat ground shooting right. flat and you're never shooting flat ground shooting flat. Yeah. So you almost always go a quarter to a half shorter. Um, personally, I'd probably run a slightly shorter loop. Um, if you get a face position that feels good and that's why you run around that, I get that, but you're giving up effective draw length by having it be that long. Mm -hmm. And if the loop's tied correctly and it's the right material, you're not gonna wear it out for it being too short, even with the release you have. And if you are, you probably got burrs on your release and you probably ought to look at your release more. Man, now is the... If you if you take that out just a little bit, um, you'll, just okay. just a little. Yeah. Not a, dull, not a lot, just enough to be noticeable. Okay. That it is off a little. Yeah, but now's, I mean, now's the time. I'm, I'm oh, yeah. super happy we're doing that. Yeah, plenty of, plenty of time to get this perfected shorter module on there and dropped down to the 80% let off instead of the 85 which he said was his preference and he thought he was shooting 80s anyway uh, and the beauty of the 80 is it's going to be a little faster and give you a little bit more holding weight which will actually make you steadier the only advantage to shooting the 85% is you can hold your bow back for a longer period of time i.e. two to three minutes instead of one to two minutes are you really responsibly taking a shot at two and a half to three minutes anyway probably not so Personally, 80 is better. It's just, it feels better the other way. Oh yeah, a lot better. Notice the difference? I mean, it's, it, my shot, ex, my, my body explodes a lot more. Way more movement forward, way more movement back, which is yeah. what you want. Yeah, a lot more explosion. And the funny part is since you went to your, to an 80%, you probably didn't lose any velocity giving up the half inch right. hydraulic because they're, you know, roughly that much difference in velocity when yeah. you switch. So you probably don't have to recite anything, would be my guess, in hmm. this scenario. Unless we start monkeying with string and cables, then you're right. definitely reciting some right. things. Well, I wanted to twist it up to 90 pounds. Let's try that. You can if you want, if, but you know, no. it's not efficient. There's more efficient ways to do it. Yeah, your grip's touching a lot better now. A lot better forward movement. Man, the explosion. Did we see some forward movement there? Oh, a lot. Well, yeah. the explosion out of the shot, I, I can just tell, like, I'm not trying to do that. It's yeah. just, now it's just happening. So I'm going to have you shoot one more, and I'm going to touch the back of your hand, the position your elbow should be going in when it goes off to make okay. sure you're pulling with the right set of muscles. Okay. Because you can pull with your bicep and your tricep, and mm -hmm. your elbow won't actually go back. It goes down. Okay. It's cheating, basically. Yeah, and um, I may do that. We want, it, we want to engage our back. Yep. Because it's way stronger than our bi. Or the our rhomboids. Time. Yeah, I'm not the fitness guy. I just know back there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a back back there. Yeah, get all comfortable and up and tell me when you think you're good. I'm good. Okay, so we want to be moving this way as we pull. Nice. That's good. As long as your elbow's going back and not down, you're pulling with the right group. See, of I feel like a lot of people think that, like, you're tr supposed to be pulling toward the back wall, but the reality is you're trying to pull a little bit more this way. 100%, right? you're trying to expand your chest and roll your shoulders. And when you do that, you engage your back muscles and then your, your strongest part of your body basically is pointing and holding the bow. Um, the verbiage that you're talking about is the concept of your arrow and your elbow being in a straight line as mm -hmm. you fire, but you're pulling back. You just want that to be the pressure point at which it stops. Because if your elbow is in a straight line behind your arrow, when you're pulling, it doesn't do this. It just goes and pushes yeah. forward and back. So, but your your momentum and follow through should still go that direction. And your front hand should still go that way a little bit. If you stop right before you get to your face with your hand. Okay, right about there. Relax your shoulder and hold it on my on my um, shoulder yeah. here. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Shoulder does this. Okay. Feel that? Yeah. So when you get to like right about there, we want to do that. Okay. And then you're engaged here, and this is taunt. Yep. And you've engaged the load to your back. Okay, so as I'm bringing it through, then I'm thinking about... Okay. You're like... Whoop. We just cuddled, by the way. Yeah, well, you know. I just got to cuddle with MFJJ. <laughs> there you go. He got to smell my CrossFit. <laughs> it was surprisingly decent. I was, I was expecting a bit more of a good. musk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so as I get close... So we want to rotate your shoulder. Up and over. There you go. Better. Yeah. It'll take some cycles for sure. To get for that because sure. that's going to be a different feel because you're pulling your bow all the way back and then you're bringing it into anchor. But your movement's a lot better. Okay. Your follow through is really good. Like you got a good amount of front pressure, yeah, I can good see amount that. of back pressure. The movements are right and the shoulder positions are right. Shoot one more for me. 
I'm trying to think about that shoulder thing. I'm gonna sneak over here. Yep. That's good. Whatever you're comfortable. That's really good. Like your shoulder is staying down. Okay. This one's rolling back as it goes off. I, I like it. Like that's to me that's a lot better length. Okay. Um so let's have you draw one more and I want you to point at the floor and point at the ceiling and okay. tell me what it feels like to you. Alright. Okay. So if you're trying to go up. Like you got a base. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, your body just naturally pivoted back, so it's e a lot easier to do this and bend at your waist. Yeah. If you're gonna be going down, the closer you get, the easier it is to bend at your waist. Yeah. See, these are good tips. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, if you're if you're sitting like this the whole time, which is true on flat ground, and that's great, but as soon as you do this, you've increased the width of what you're trying to rotate. Right. With. So if you're going up, pretend like you're a base player. It's yep. easier to lean back, and when you're going down, bring them closer together. You will feel a little more wobbly, mm -hmm. but you won't lose the length that you're trying to use here. And as long as you can keep your hand against your jaw, it's gonna be 10 times more consistent than having a little bit more width in my okay. feet so it doesn't move around. Got so it. this has to stay here. Yeah. If it comes off, it starts doing this okay. really fast. Yeah, that makes okay? sense. So let's try it again, just so you can feel that half inch difference. I don't think you're gonna to wanna to change the string and cable positions. I think that half okay. is about perfect. Getting engaged here. All right, so uphill. We go bass player. Yeah, uphill. Keep bending, bend back. There you go. Yeah, it's all in your spine here. Yep. Okay, go ahead and come back. Your hand didn't move at all. This all looked the same from this side. Now all the way together on your feet, and then bend down. There you go. Surprisingly more stable. Yeah. Well, you're not fighting your body. I mean, all of its natural positions. So now that your draw length looks about right, your next yeah, five shooting sessions. I want you to really focus on your foot width, your hip width, and your shoulder width, that they're all the line and you're doing it the same every time. And then tell me if you have a consistency of like shoot, how many arrows do you shoot at a time? Like three, four, five, six? What do you do? 50, 75, depending on the day. No, I mean in between pulling arrows. Oh. Like I shoot oh, five. Oh, I see pull, what you're saying. I shoot four. Uh, pull, yeah, four or five. Six. Okay. Four or five. So on the last arrow, let's say you're shooting five. On the fifth arrow, I want you to draw back, anchor in with your eyes shut, and open up and tell me what you're pointed at, and tell me if it's consistently one way. I'll okay. give you my cell phone so you can message me. Yeah. Right. That, that's the one I actually respond to. So <laughs> okay. Much, but, yeah. Um, so, and tell me if it's consistently what way, and I can tell you what to do with your feet to change it so you're always pointed at the target. Dude, this is blowing my mind. This is like next level stuff, man. This, but it takes like me being willing to come in here and break my shot down with somebody who knows more about this than I know. Like, I don't take formal lessons. So there's gonna be things that I do wrong and I've just been learning off the internet, but to have somebody like MFJJ look at me and say, here's the things that you can do. Like, we've already made some huge changes that I'm, it's gonna take me a long time to get used to, but this is epic. So one more thing we should probably do is triple check the P-Pite with your eyes shut a couple times. Okay. And make sure we don't need to move it. But okay. outside of that, I think it's sweet. Um, you won't have to retune it because it's a dual. It's exactly the same. You won't change you that. So, but yeah. I, I think you'll see a, a pretty decent increase in how steady you are. Okay. And you probably won't fight your movement as much. And then okay. you can play with the feet position a little bit after you get used that to it. Follow and through already felt like to me people that I watch that like I mean watching Dan uh -huh. like when Dan shot breaks everything explodes. Mm -hmm. I mean I want to be more like Dan. I want to be like Dan. Well, Dan so. didn't used to break because he used to shoot too long of a draw length because he didn't want to acknowledge how short his draw length really was. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those shorter guy things. It happens. See, but I'm yeah. still going to lie and be like, I'm a 30. I'm a 30. Yeah. But I'm a 29 and three quarters, apparently. <laughs> uh, I feel so inadequate now. <laughs> Do nudes on you? <laughs> I feel like it's abuse. Josh has an only I, don't, I can't. Yeah. I can't imagine anybody would pay for that. <laughs> I can't imagine either. No offense. All right. All right. Um, all right so you can follow follow MFJJ over at Podium Archery on YouTube. Anything Podium Archer. Else? Podium Archer yeah. on YouTube. Okay. And then well, and we have else? a website where we sell products and all that. Mm -hmm. Same same website. PodiumArcher.com. Um, it, it never hurts to have somebody look at you. You know, no matter how much you're shooting or how much you feel confident. And if someone knows what they're doing, has ten minutes to take a look at you, you'll catch little things. Um, I've, I've had people look at me and find something that I didn't catch because it's hard to look at yourself while you're shooting. Yeah. So it, it never never hurts to get a little. Yeah, help for in that sure. Regard. And then being willing to like being willing to make the changes because obviously if you're not willing to change anything about what you're doing, like he changed my draw length, which is, and he made it shorter which hurts your pride a little bit. Like, I think I'm long, <laughs> strong. 
<laughs> down to get the friction on on his OnlyFans. No, <laughs> I, I, I just want uh, you got to be willing to take the coaching, and I'm a hundred percent willing to take the coaching because I want to level up. I want to level up the game and and be a better archer in the long run. So, dude, thank you. It's my pleasure, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for watching. I'm Brandon <laughs> McDonald. MFJJ. <laughs>